Hello everyone, welcome to a new technology moment. Uh, today we're here with you bringing you this new content that will surely be very valuable to all of those who use Unify equipment or are thinking about doing so. We're talking about Unify Identity, a very interesting service from Unify that aims to implement an easy and secure way not only to share resources through your local network, but also to integrate them securely through VPN connections, have access to the same company's Wi-Fi networks, access control in remote locations, and much more. Also, as we'll see very soon in our Unify NAS Pro video, an extraordinary NAS, by the way, uh, we will basically analyze how we'll have access to our own cloud without having to resort to third-party services to store our information and access it remotely in a secure manner. But on the contrary, we will be able to link it to them, providing us with a redundant storage. In addition to VPN access with Unify Identity, you can also authenticate remotely and have access to the Wi-Fi networks of the same company without having to ask for credentials every time you travel to those satellite offices. Let us remember that as usual in Unify Equipment and Solutions, this is a service in full evolution and we expect an even greater integration soon. Of course, this in addition to growth due to all the advantages that this type of solution infers as many of you will surely know. Well, as usual in our videos, we will see and understand the scope of this particular video and we will try to answer the following questions so you can jump to the chapter that you need. First, what is Unify Identity and what is it for? Second, what do I need to be able to deploy Unify Identity in my current infrastructure? Third, how do I create a simple identity deployment? A, if I have a fixed public IP address, B, no fixed, nor public IP address, and C, we'll also see examples of remote connection through your VPN to a shared resource and how easy it is to create its clients. Finally, the fourth question that we'll answer is, can we integrate it with other LDAP services like Active Directory, Google, and so on? Okay, so right to the point, in a very simple and fast way, Unify Identity basically provides us with an authentication platform through which, thanks to the integration services of a system like Unify and its cloud services, we will have remote access to our offices. And because it only runs on Unify equipment, it will establish VPN connections safely, either from our mobile device or from any of our computers. We'll also be able to connect to the Wi-Fi of remote branch offices uh, we will connect to cameras, we'll have access through control doors, software as a service as well, to name the most important. We will be approaching these topics in our next videos. At this point, it is important to clarify that the cloud plays a very important role when we link to the directory services such as LDAP, Active Directory, and Google. For today's very simple example, we'll start with the smallest deployments for companies that want to manage remote access to their dependencies locally. The one in today's example, again, is basically the access, or better yet, type of access that is most used in the world for small and medium-sized companies, especially due to the fact that it does not require subscriptions or monthly payments. What do I need then? Well, due to the nature of the services that are created and executed when identity is activated, a unified gateway solution must be involved, such as the fantastic dream machine or any of the gateways, uh, whether large scales such as the Fortress Gateway or even the Great Unify Express with small integrated solutions. All of them are tailored to the needs of our companies or offices according to our budget. Okay, so now we're going to deploy Unify in a simple and independent way as we do in each of the offices of our company or simply in our main office or the place where we want to authenticate our users. Uh, we will assume at this point that we already have a network controller installed and running on one of the gateway solutions that we mentioned in the previous chapter. Additional Unify equipment on our network is not going to be necessary, just the gateway. So let's go to our portal. In this case, we're going to configure it on this gateway, which is a Unify Dream Machine. In essence, it's like a dream router. And we go to its settings. And please keep in mind that these menus and locations in Unify change constantly. Hopefully, not much. We can verify which users we have created on the Users tab that match the users that we will need. And then we go to the Identity Endpoint, check the terms and conditions, and click on Get Started. At this point, the invitation will be sent to the users who are active. Basically, you will receive a link where you will find the validation credential 
for a limited period of time. We will see that in a moment. And this link that we can copy and paste, which will guide us through installing the client either in a computer or in any mobile device. A very quick and simple process that we need to follow to install the client program. Back to the configuration here, we can choose if we want only VPN or the possibility of connecting to the Wi-Fi of those remote offices or locations. Well, and much more actually like EV charging, access control, camera access, services which we do not have running in our network right now. Let's see now what we have to do on the computer that we want to connect remotely from via Unify VPN. We we'll receive this notification by email to that network client. We will click on that link that will take us to load the credentials. We click on that link that will take us to load the credentials and our authentication to access the services that we have been asked. At this moment, it will be enough to slide the control to connect to any of the dependencies that we have added to the current computer or device. It's that simple. Each gateway will appear separately. Here we see how we connect in a matter of seconds and ping a computer on our remote network. As with any other VPN connection, we invite you to watch our video on how to create firewall exceptions so that our teams in the remote location accept requests from clients on subnets other than theirs. It is important to understand that the moment we connect to our remote gateway, our internet output will become that of such remote network. We can quickly check that if we visit any page that validates our IP address at a certain time. As you can see right here, this one is the public IP which identifies us before connecting to the VPN, and this one is the public IP which identifies us once we have successfully connected to the remote location. It's really cool. And actually, by the way, they couldn't have made it any easier. Okay, so here comes the first variation. What if we do not have a fixed IP address and much less a public one? This is the case for the vast majority of users and after implementing Unify Identity in this scenario, we will see this warning symbol appear, which means our identity service is not accessible from the internet. So let's look at a practical case in which we had this restriction with this Unify Dream Machine Pro. When we activate the identity service on a Unify gateway like this one, uh, that is behind the internet service provider's router. For example, here we see that the WAN port of the Unified Dream Machine Pro receives a private IP. And when activating identity, the VPN options are not activated and the warning appears. Well, in this case, we have two practical ways to approach it. Both include contacting our internet service provider and request that they configure their equipment in bridge mode so that the public IP is bridged to our gateway. The methodology of assigning this public IP will depend, of course, on the ISP. It is usually done through a point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet connection. It sounds very simple, but unfortunately, public and fixed IP addresses are something that providers value highly and only assign those to business clients, as it is the case with this UDM that has the public IP directly on its WAN interface, which is the reason why the configuration of Unify Identity was so quick at that location. So now let's go for plan B. For this, you will also have to contact tech support, like I said, of your ISP and ask them to configure a redirection of port 51820 through the router to the private IP address of our gateway. Even better for many is to have all the ports redirected at once, something that is known as the DMZ or demilitarized zone. This option, by the way, is the one that we chose. And after a little more than half an hour with customer support, in our particular case, of course, we were able to proceed to the next step of this plan B, which consists of assigning a host name to the public IP that the internet service provider receives on its WAN interface, which is in this case this one that we do not show for obvious reasons. First, we have to check what the address at that location is. In our case, we were receiving this public IP address to our gateway simply by pinging its WAN address. Of course, having the ICMP response activated and having assigned a DMZ to the private IP of our Unified Dream Machine Pro. The final step will be to use a dynamic DNS service so that we can have a host name that will always be the same and actually points to the current dynamic public IP address that we have received in our ISP's device. One of such services that we like the most is DocDNS that we can easily and quickly create 
it will provide us with the information that we will then assign to our unified gateway on the respective WAN interface. The username will be the email and the password will be the token that you get from the service once you have created a new host. Uh, where it says server, we leave it blank and finish the process by clicking create. As we see here, our dynamic DNS will have been successfully created. So after having first redirected the ports, all of them a task that our service provider does to our internal IP on the WAN port of our gateway, and also having created the host in DNS, we follow these instructions that the UDN Pro shows right here by searching alternate address. It guides us actually visually and we either type our fixed public IP or we type the DNS host. We then apply the changes. We go back to identity and see how the warning symbol disappears. This one about Wi-Fi still has it because at this very moment it doesn't detect any Unify access points in my network. At this point, this gateway is already able to accept incoming connections. We just simply verify that the users we need have the respective assignment active. Very important. We can see right here that we can then connect without any problem to this UDM Pro. We see when we are connected because the Unify VPN icon is active and will warn us that we have created a secure connection. As we said, we can access resources, copy files to the remote computer, access NAS, print to remote devices, in short, everything that we have seen in our videos to access resources through VPN. Finally, and as we said at the beginning of this video, yes, Unify Identity is completely compatible with LDAP services. This means that you will be able to link it to Google or Azure with uh, Active Directory and services that include LDAP. Okay, guys, we invite you to participate in the comments and enrich this way of learning together seeking answers from other users and in general implementing technology in the best way possible. Remember that your kind support to be able to continue creating this content for you is to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.